And now, from the great state of Mississauga in Ontario, Canada, it's the Ted Wallachin Podcast. Brought to you by Tom's Place, for the finest in men's fashion. Tom's Place will suit you. And ETP Canada, providing a state administration with ease. ETP Canada. And now, here's Ted. Thank you, Miss Becky. Hey, and welcome to uh, the podcast. Thank you very much for joining us. If it's your first time, we appreciate it. We hope you enjoy it. And if you're a regular, you obviously are enjoying it, or uh, you've lost a bet to someone and you're stuck with us for a while. But either way, we we appreciate that. And uh, don't forget to check out uh, our website. We'll tell you about that again at the end of the show. But I'm looking forward to this uh, this program. Uh, it, not often you get an opportunity to uh, to interview two people with whom uh, you've worked one of which anyway, and have known for years and have become friends and colleagues. And that's exactly what the situation is today. We have um, two very special guests and friends. They are highly acclaimed award-winning broadcasters, authors, voice artists, voice coaches, bloggers, vloggers, and podcasters. Together, they host Gracefully and Frankly, a uh, weekly podcast which is available virtually everywhere. They are Aaron Davis and Lisa Brandt. Nice to see the both of you. I was going to say hello, ladies, but then I, I'm not even sure if that's politically correct anyway. That, are you, should I be referred to you as ladies, guys, friends? I can show you some friends. Broads. <laughs> Got a couple of broads on the show today. <laughs> I have a terrible habit of saying hi guys to women and, and younger women do balk at that. And to me, it's just generic, but yeah, it's everything changes. And you know, I do that as well. I have a, I have a, I have a daughter and I've, she's been, been in a room with, with her friends and I'll walk in and go, hi guys. And one time, one of them just sort of looked at me like I fell off a fruit truck and I said, did I say something wrong? Mm. It's, you're not really yeah. referring to the gender at that point. It's just a, a generic term. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was hosting to an us. event last week, and it was a lot of, you know, 20s and 30s. And at one point I said, ladies and gentlemen, and then I thought, no, we don't do that anymore because there are people who identify as as neither. And uh, it's a whole new it's it's a whole new awareness. And I will never use the word woke because I hate it with the heat mm. of a thousand suns. What's happened to that word? Uh, so yeah, it is a whole new awareness, but for a while we were all being called dude, right? And it was yeah. like, I am so not a dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, can you say good evening pronouns? Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, I'm sure that would be a very short evening, Ted. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing that I have a problem with, with, with woke is that everybody you ask and talk to about, about woke gives you a different definition of, of what the word means. To some people, it's such a depending on their political affiliation, exactly. right? Like it's either good or it's bad, or it's yeah, it's pathetic or it's wonderful. Or Aaron and I have talked about this. To me, it just means being kind. If you're woke, that means you're you are aware that not everybody has the same privilege, not everybody has the same access yeah. and everybody should so let's move toward it that's how oh, I that's the it. way i see it as, as well but i mean there are people on the other side of the spectrum so suddenly you think that you're you know uh it's simpatico with that individual and you're in during in the midst of a conversation and, and you're speaking from two different uh two different platforms so i mm. i don't even use the word I, I i agree with Aaron. it's like get that word out of here it's it's it's, it's confusing to too many people yeah, it's used as a cudgel now, it, and it's uh, you know, are oh, are we too woke? Are we too this? Are, as soon as the as soon as the GOP in the U.S. takes over a word, then you know, and and of course the the angry white men spewing it at Fox, then you know that okay, there's something that's that's you know being manufactured here, like the war on Christmas or the the rage farming, as uh, as Lisa pointed out, we did a we did a bit on some some new terms and rage farming is all they do. And so they're using woke like this big weapon. Don't be woke. Don't be woke. Why not use it if you use it as a synonym for aware, you know, be aware. Yeah. That's okay, now I, something I've, I've learned... not heard the Sorry. expression rage farming. Excuse me. <laughs> Tell me about that. That is when, from our point of view, for example, if you're on Twitter or whatever, and something just in, makes you incensed with anger, chances are, no matter where it's coming from, it is 
put out there to do exactly that and get you to share it and say, isn't this terrible? And so, you know, we all know the usual suspects who are doing that kind of thing. And it's just out there for exactly that reason. So it's just rage farming, like trolling or any of that other stuff that's just meant to get your back up and, and get you upset and get them more clicks and more eyes on what yeah, they're talking it's, about. It's, it's sad to think that it's edited, but it's true that there are so many people who's, you know, whose reason for being is waking up and being angry and pissing somebody off for whatever reason. Or it's like they, they walk into a, into a cocktail party and you can sense them and it's like they're just looking for an argument. They're waiting for everybody to have one or two more drinks just so they can get them going and then boom, off they go. And it doesn't matter what it is. And when they start losing the argument, they switch topic midstream into something else. Or they, or they like if you could be arguing with them about um, who, who controls the price of oil and gas and, and, and if you disagree with each other and they think that they're losing the argument, suddenly they'll look at you and say, you know, well, you know what? What do you know? Look, look how much weight you've gained. What the hell does that have to do with anything? <laughs> you know? <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Or, or pedophiles. You know, they'll just throw something yeah. else out to, to just take it this way. And, and it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And not another then, one is Nazis, too, right? I mean, it's like I'm thinking to myself. Yeah. Okay, so like I'm of Ukrainian descent, and, and I pay attention to what's going on with the Russian invasion in Ukraine, and, and you've got Putin claiming that the president of Ukraine is a Nazi. And I said, well, that's interesting. That'd be the first Jewish Nazi I've ever met. Yeah, it's incredible. And, of course, it comes mostly from people who have no sense of Putin excluded, but no sense of history whatsoever, yeah. just just what that word entails. Yeah. Or even oh, even if you're most... not a fan of, of the prime ministers, I mean, to call uh, a Trudeau a dictator, you have no idea what the word dictator means. No, and you can be, be elected to office. Look at the premier of Alberta. She knows nothing. <laughs> You know, and and people will, because it gets their anger up and it gets their dander up and maybe touches on a little bit of what they're feeling, that that is the rage farming again, getting you upset so that you, I don't know, tattoo F. Trudeau on your arm or whatever, like I saw some guy do. It's like, really, you're going to put the name of a guy you hate on your arm? That's I know, really I know. That, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that does not make sense at all. Uh, for, for those people not, no. not, not familiar with your histories together, and, and there would be very few who don't know who either of you are, um, you, you kind of worked together but didn't work together. You worked together but were separated by a hallway, right? You were doing the mornings at uh, Aaron at CHFI, and Lisa, you were doing the morning news at, uh, at 680. So you were there at the same time, but you weren't really working together. How did you strike up your, your friendship, your relationship? Well, the funny thing is, when I started at Rogers Radio, uh, before moving over to 680, I was part of the 680 news team, but I was actually doing the morning newscasts on Aaron's show. Okay. And n nobody remembers. <laughs> well, no. it wasn't my show, for starters. I'll, re I'll refresh your memory on that. It was okay. Daynard and Friends, kind of, but yeah, it was... Uh... <laughs> Well, I was kind of busy to listen. But but nobody and tolerators. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I think yeah, you were I busy. Yeah, you were dead. Time. So, so yeah, you didn't right. work together, but, but again, not really, right? I'd, I'd enter the room and leave the room, and enter the room and leave the room, and so I was like, sort of a, um, a little, not even a side dish to the show, just something that came along and sat on the plate once in a while, and then left again. <laughs> I didn't even, mm -hmm. I didn't really interact on the show. Um, once in a while, I, I got to fill in for Erin when she was on vacation. Um, but everything changed a lot. And then, of course, there was the opening on 680, and, and then I did go over there. So that's actually when I think we started going to the gym together. Because I think we, we did, yeah. There was yeah. a gym there in the in the Rogers campus, as they called it, the one there at uh, Bloor and Jarvis or Ted Rogers Way. And uh, it was really convenient, Ted, because you had to go buy this gym to get to your car. So it's like, oh, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. But uh, so we did, and we we encouraged each other, and and uh, you know teased each other mercilessly and stuff. And and it turns out we're born twelve days apart, and so we are we're very very much alike. We have our differences too, of course, but. Uh, yeah, we are we're kind of soul sisters, and it's um, and so the friendship just built mm -hmm. from there. I don't know if I ever told Aaron this, so I'm going to tell you this now, Ted, and Aaron Ooh. will have to hear it. But I remember working in Hamilton. I did a talk show at a Hamilton radio station and seeing the Don and Aaron TV spots with you know the star from WKRP or whoever yep. would be on with them, and um, and thinking that woman hasn't made. 
she has it made. I bet, and I was in radio for a long time. I should have known better about the stresses and the pressures and the the personalities that you're stuck working with here and there. But at the time, I remember thinking, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's the shit. That is it right mm-hmm. there. And in many ways, it was as far as having the best job in radio and having all the ratings. But um, boy, oh, boy, it, like you can just be blinded to what's actually going on, even though you're in the same profession, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, I guess I thought if they were spending that kind of money on you, uh, <laughs> you were riding rainbows and yeah, unicorns. Yeah, so. and on top of that, right. the fact that that shift literally sucks years out of your life, you know? It's, it does. It's, I mean, yeah. I talked to John yeah. Moore about it, uh, who does the mornings at uh, News Talk 1010 in Toronto and, uh, the other day, and he said, boy, boy, he says, this thing really does take it out of you. And I said, yeah. And I said, how the hell did Wally Carter do this for almost 50 years? I mean that's that's quite that's quite astonishing. No idea. When you think about it. Yeah, and I see that Metro Mornings on CBC is switching out hosts again, and I thought, wow, you know, this is this is their like, was it the previous host's choice, or is it just kind of their? We're going to give you a life somewhere else now. You've put in your time. It's not like you've paid your dues because, as you know, mornings is where you get to after you've mm-hmm. paid your dues for the most part. But uh, yeah, they're they're kind of cycling them out, and it's not for a lack of ratings. It's just it's kind of a humane thing to do. What well, a neat it, idea! That said, I wouldn't have traded the morning hours yeah, for anything. Yeah, you're right. It, it it is it is a good thing to do if that's what they're doing. The unfortunate thing is to me that I, I find more and more people that I that I talk to who have left their occupations in in the media didn't do so of their own volition. Even oh, though yeah. they walk away oh. saying that they did, because that's what the agreement maybe that they, they had with their bosses, or they just, you know, it's less embarrassing to, to, you know, you don't want to get into a conversation every time you go to a cocktail party. So what happened? I left. You know, I was tired. I wanted to go. You know, that's enough. Yeah. But it's yeah. nowadays, it's like it, it seems to me you, you reach a certain age or a certain pay level, and uh, it's time to trade in for. Uh, something younger and something cheaper. Yeah. There was a, an unwritten rule at Bell Media, my last radio station, and I walked away. I was just done. It was, you know, decades of mornings. And um, you, what was it, 20, 40, 60 rule? If you were there more than 20 years, if you were over 40 years of age, or you made over 60, wow. uh, you were on the bubble for the next Jeez. round of cuts. Yeah. That was the that was the unofficial thing that went around, and it, whenever there were cuts, you could find that they were the person fell into one of the categories for yeah. sure. Mm. And what's even more insulting in in many cases is is these people, the younger people, when when they're suddenly shocked to find that that they're out of a job and they're like forty three years of age and forty five years of age, try finding one now. If they think you're too yeah. old, somebody else is going to think the same thing. And they end up, you know, getting sucked into this cheap uh, buyout for like six months or whatever. Meanwhile, they could have had like a year or two years or more. It's, uh, it's, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I find myself sort of backing off when when I start talking about it. I, I've I've been in radio for for the vast majority of my my life, and I loved it. But I'm so disappointed to see what's going on now. I just it it breaks my heart, and and it, and I can't I honestly I can't even listen to most radio stations. The quality on air. Um, I think, how the hell did you, you shouldn't even be living in Toronto, never mind working in Toronto, you know, but it, you know what, it, when we have those opinions and voice them, Ted, we sound like, we sound like I the know. old folks who are complaining about, I know, but what you're saying is absolutely true, but the, the industry is killing itself. It's not a radio industry. It's a telecommunications industry, yeah. and it doesn't matter anymore if you're local, if you're live, if you're one on the if you're the one on the scene when there's a a, a police shooting or 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 a flood or whatever, because they're going to have somebody from three cities or provinces away still do their midday show. You know, it's just. It's killing itself, and then they'll blame the people who are on the air right. um, instead of instead of the quality or the lack thereof that they and the effort that they've put into it. There's no farm teams anymore, no. right? Yep. So yeah. I did, however many. Where did you, where did you start? Did let's let's go like, backwards for for a second here. Where did you first start? Both of you. Where were your first jobs? I did high school and college in Belleville, Loyalist College, and two months into. Uh, 
into college, I had a job at the local easy listening station, CIGL. And in the Sigal. evenings, because I wanted to. Yeah, Seagull it was Seagal. called. Yeah. And, um, and then in the evenings, I would go over to the CJBQ AM 800 do, uh, newsroom and do the, do the news and sports. And I didn't know anything. I didn't know there were two leagues in baseball. <laughs> and I'd be reading off the, off the wire and saying, you know, in the American National League tonight, <laughs> and somebody finally called and told me. Um, and then from Belleville, it turned into full-time the second year, then to Ottawa CFRA for six months, and then to CKLW in Windsor for two and a half years, and then to Toronto CKO. And uh, and then CHFI. Mm. So that was my story. Um, did my did my early dues fast and and in southern and south southwestern Ontario. Mm. What about you, Lisa? But see, that's the thing, right? You made those mistakes, and my mistakes about baseball were not knowing what a twi-night double header was and changing it to a two-night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I changed it to twilight because I thought that it was a typo. Thank you. <laughs> so did I. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> just my correction was a little different oh i know flashbacks right Oof. so I, my story was a little similar at niagara college i got a job at cjrn pretty pretty quickly on and was doing um, that's where paul and carol mm-hmm. Mott were and i used to press my little nose up to the window and go oh this is incredible a husband and wife doing a talk show together and um i would do like midnight weather and sports and my father would get the whole legion in smithville to tune you know to (laughs) tune in and listen um from there i went out west i'll I'll go through this quickly uh red deer alberta prince george bc london ontario wingham for four years where i got to do everything from tv to am to fm became a program director then i met you ted when i got to toronto at mix Mm -hmm. 99.9 and cfrb back to kitchener then to hamilton then back to toronto and then back to London. <laughs> and you know, and, and, but that's interesting because it's like, I mean, it's, for me, it was like, it was like Brampton, Peterborough, Montreal, Hamilton, Toronto, right? So you were all these different steps. I mean, try getting a credit card back then because they keep saying, you, you're not very, um, you know, I'm just looking at your resume here. You don't, you, you can't seem to hold on to a job. And people, well, you don't yeah. understand yeah. the idea in radio is not to hold on to a job for a long period of time when you're starting off. The idea is to keep leapfrogging. But now those nice. positions, people aren't going to those t- those towns anymore. Or if they are, they're staying there for whatever reason. Now it's like you know, a couple of years out of out of out of Humber College, and suddenly you're doing you're doing the uh, evening news at six eighty, and you're thinking, and and you're saying things like, um, and in the American National League, right? Exactly <laughs> in Toronto <laughs> or the mm-hmm. they, or the yeah, it's Bryce. unfortunate, but. Aaron yes, has, yes. Yeah. Aaron has nailed it. The the industry is eating itself and then yeah. blaming the talent for it and it's not fair. Yeah. Lisa Bryant, Aaron Davis, my guests, uh, they uh, together are the uh, hosts of Gracefully and Frankly. Um why, when, how did you come up with the idea? We talked about doing a podcast. We both talked about how we wanted to. Aaron already has a successful podcast called Drift. It's sleep stories, original sleep sleep stories. And we talked about doing something and I'd say, oh, I really want to do it, but I don't want it to be like radio. And uh, because I was done with radio and and, uh, it all came down to Aaron coming up with the name. And what was I like 20 minutes from having to leave for my flight in BC? And you said gracefully and frankly and we went ah. yep and and so we ran out to the driveway took the top down in our mini and i said rob you're gonna come out and you're gonna shoot a promo <laughs> and so so we did that and sometimes that's what it takes because we wanted to do it but i'll tell you ted it's that it's that voice that says oh there are a million podcasts out there what makes you think yours could make a dent and now like 11 episodes in we've got 160,000 downloads so Again, it's like radio. It, if, it doesn't matter if there are a million and six people out there doing it. If you can make that connection and talk more about the listener than about yourself or at least make it relatable, you'll yeah. connect. And that connection is everything, no matter what platform well, when you're people using. people use that excuse, they say, why would you do a podcast when there are a million other podcasts? Well, first of all, some of those podcasts uh, um, last three weeks, and then people get frustrated and think, yeah. oh, wait a minute, I'm not making a million dollars, I'm not doing this anymore. 
some of them right this yeah, is work some of them right are done um as documentary series where it's like a four-parter some of them are seasonal where there'll be they'll talk about nothing but golf or they'll talk about nothing but about football and my god there, there must be there must be half a million nfl podcasts by the by in, in, in itself so a lot of that is is misinformation when, when they say that there's so many millions of podcasts also one of the great things about podcasts is i mean you know i wouldn't if i was in the radio and you guys were doing a radio show i wouldn't be talking to you right now because i wouldn't be allowed to talk to you because you'd be working for another company and you would be considered to be competition right. now you have a podcast i have a co- podcast we're not really competing against each other because i can listen to you gun on a tuesday morning and somebody can listen to me on a friday afternoon so that doesn't exist so it's it's different in that way so the amount of podcasts that exist really it that doesn't matter yeah i guess it's the intimidation factor from the little voice inside that says you know you're not worthy or you're going to fail or 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 somehow you just failed upwards your whole career but um yeah and we just found that you know it, it just it it, it comes easily. It's not easy. As you know, there's a lot of work and planning and editing and, uh, and you know, the, the behind the scenes stuff of getting it up on the platform, promoting it. God, I hate promoting. <laughs> Ted, I don't know if you yeah. feel the same way. This is why we had promo departments and sales departments. But I just feel like promotion oh, God, and sales. She's mentioning her podcast Promotions again. and sales. I, know? I, I don't hate the people that do that. I don't hate the jobs per no. se i just hate doing those jobs because to me yes. i'm begging people would you please listen yep. to me would you please give me money i hate that mm-hmm. i hate that yeah well th- there's a way to do it though aaron has a flair for it where it's not oh g- come and check this out it's going to be the best thing you've ever heard in the world and you know it'll cure your athlete's foot and <laughs> grow your hair back it, she's wow it, it got a way of it's a commute it's like i know it's pretty good yeah. isn't it? it's a community feel about it and it's i think it's all in the way you approach it so when you do it aaron it doesn't feel like promotion it doesn't feel like um i mean we, we're so lucky with gracefully and frankly that if it's not up and we're not saying something about it people reach out and go where is this thing you know, like I mentioned a shoe brand on the one podcast and I had people messaging me going, you said you're going to put the picture up. Where's the picture yeah. and stuff like that, you know, and and we're lucky that way. Um, they're telling us to promote what we said we were going to promote. And by the way, I don't get any money from the shoes or anything. So that's why I'm not mentioning them. Well, how did Envy them. Pillow yeah. come about? Was that as a result of your your original <sighs> podcast, Drift? It's amazing, Ted, because... Um, how did Envy Pillow come up? Oh, I know. Okay, first off, my my Drift with Aaron Davis Sleep Stories podcast began as a part of Frequency. I had a great relationship with Julie Adam at Rogers, and I reached out to her one day and said, dying to do sleep stories because I would go to sleep listening to Calm and go, I want to do this, and so I couldn't get to sleep. It wasn't mm-hmm. Calm at all. Um, so, <laughs> so what I did was I reached out, and she said, yeah, and put me in touch with Frequency, and then we started this idea of the sleep stories. And after a little while, it wasn't growing. People weren't paying to subscribe because why would they? They got me for free all those years. And so I said, fine, let's please, let's I'm going to go my own way. And I did. And the very first people I reached out to, Kathy and Kim, two registered nurses who started this Envy Pillow thing years ago, because they had sent me one at the radio station again years ago. I loved it. I use it. I sent Lisa one as a present, uh, paid for it. And so they said, yeah, let's do this. It's perfect. And then I let them know that I was starting up a second podcast. I hoped it wasn't going to dilute anything with Drift. And they and they said, can we sponsor you? I went, what? Yes, yeah. of course. So they're like our angels. And the fact that it's two women and a woman run company supporting other women it's just a, it's a lovely thing. So really, they've been, they've been just incredible to our success. So we're, we're really lucky. We know how hard it is yeah, to get sponsors. Yeah, what makes this, this pillow so special? It is ergonomically. Does it cure athletes uh, too? Um, <laughs> uh, no, this one doesn't unless you're using it wrong. <laughs> like, we don't know. But it's copper infused and copper is great for, for killing off germs. So there's that, there's that added thing. And, and they're silk covered. They were originally designed to help women who were having, because these two women worked in the, in the 
in the beauty industry, if you will, to keep people from getting wrinkles after they'd had procedures and stuff. And then it was like, wait a minute, this is doing more. I started it because I had stress related neck pain, go yeah. figure. And, uh, and, and it, I, 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 I want to say cured it because it stopped. My neck pain stopped. So I started believing in it. And, and they have a guarantee. If you don't love it, send it back. They'll clean it, give it to a shelter, and you'll get your money back. So it's just integrity upon integrity. And, and if you can ally yourself with a company like that, that's amazing. Yeah. We're, we're so lucky. How do you lucky. decide what it is we're that you're going to talk lucky. about on your podcast weekly? Gracefully and Frankly is the name of the podcast, which is available on every platform available, I would imagine. It's kind of yes. funny because um, Aaron has said before to our podcast listeners, you know, give us an idea if there's something you'd like us to talk about. We're not saying we'll do it for sure because we don't even do everything each other suggests. And it's true. We don't. Um, we, I guess we just, it has to work for both of us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's organic. We wish we disagreed on things to make, because I mean, if you had a, if you had a radio show and you had a partner and you guys agreed on everything, you know that the consultants and the PD would be insane guys. But but you know what? With Lisa and me, it we just, we agree, we come, if we don't agree, it's yes and, <laughs> you know, the old improv thing. It's not like, you're wrong. But I mean, I've got my, I've got a little list here on an old AA folder. Um, and, and it's just like, okay, things we're going to talk about in, in episode 11, and it's envy, the pillows, Oscars, Lisa's words, woke, Lisa's CBD gummies. Didn't get to gummies. We didn't you know, get we, 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 it just goes where it goes. That's and right. it's just like people liken it to listening in at a coffee shop yeah. with a couple of friends having a talk. And you can't that, hope for more. That's the feeling that I got as well. It's, 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 it's as though you're eavesdropping on someone's conversation, but in a polite way. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, and we, we would like you to eavesdrop on this conversation. We have had eyebrows on the list probably four times and never got to it i'm thinking eyebrows aren't gonna fly um they might <laughs> now ted you wouldn't notice it do you notice anything about this how women and the other night at the oscars boz lerman for that matter he had he had the most pronounced eyebrows of anybody there because he's got silver hair and his eyebrows were beautifully done but in dark brown and i thought you're not rocking this. <laughs> have you noticed how pronounced eyebrows are I, these you days know, ted I, I, I really haven't paid attention to eyebrows there since you go have died I will tell you, though. <laughs> he had to use a nose trimmer for his had, eyebrows. He, he, had, he had one eyebrow, went right across his forehead. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. unibrow. The yeah, unibrow. exactly. A Andy Rooney used to shelter people from the rain. <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> little known so. fact. Little known fact. But I did notice, if you have not noticed eyebrow issues, if you see the movie The Whale, take a good look at The Caregiver. She does nothing with her eyebrows, mm. and I think she's she's kind of exciting that way. She just um, had a baby in real life, Lisa. As 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 we know, you know, no once, excuse. Once you have a baby, you know, personal That's hygiene. That's what just Nyquil goes is for, Aaron. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. I kid. Now, was there ever any any discussion about? Well, I'm sure there was discussion, but, but any con consideration of having guests on as well? Or are you not interested in it? It's not that we're we, not interested. What do you think, Lisa? It's just well, that yeah, that's, we've that's talked everybody about, else's format. Sorry. Right, sorry. and we've yeah. talked about talking about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sort of like, we'll look at this down the road and see if we, you know, if it's something we want to do. But I I don't feel the need right now. For one thing, it complicates. It takes it in a different direction. Um, I think we'll know if that's something we need to do, if uh, it's on life support and um you know, that's our defibrillator or something. I don't know. But I think I think for now we're good. It's yeah. not to say that shows with guests are 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 wrong or on no. life support. No, and I know that's not what you were saying. No, in just our case, us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. And you, Ted, you're sitting in that coffee shop next to us and it's the two of us and you're you're kinda getting into what we're talking about and God bless you for listening in, my friend. Um and and somebody else comes and sits down it changes the chemistry it it yes it's going to elevate the conversation and are we going to be ourselves with that third person in the mix um so it's it would have to be somebody really not important like if michelle obama is in the neighborhood lisa i got news she's coming in here okay but otherwise i mean no i just i just 
I love the idea of just us too. And and you probably found this in the studio, Ted, too, that it, when there was a guest in or even a guest co-host, it changed the chemistry. And we really like the chemistry the way that it is. Maybe yeah. it's a little egotistical. It's just us too. But after years of having to step back or learn somebody else's dance steps, damn it, we want it to be just us too. Well, the last show that I did on the radio, which was on a Saturday afternoon at, at, at 1010, um, mm-hmm. I said to Mike Ben Dixon, who's my boss, I said, I just said, I want to do a talk show, but I don't want to take any calls. He said, what do you mean you don't want to take any calls? I said, I don't want to take any calls. I want, I want to book interesting people. And if I'm not intelligent enough or if I can't research the, the, the guest well enough to ask good questions or interesting questions, then I shouldn't be on the air to begin with. I don't need Bob from Scarborough with all due respect to Bobs and Scarboroughs and Scarberians, but need them to call in to ask a question because that, that now inter- in, interrupts my flow and screws up my pacing. And, and I didn't yeah. want to do that. And I didn't want to get into what I hear too often on the radio right now is left wing, yeah, right wing, right wing, left wing. Oh, my God. Because whenever I even tackled any political uh, topics in the radio, I would get people in, in the same show calling in or texting in. We had a, a board, right? And so yeah. we're texting in and people calling me a left wing commie, people calling me a right wing fascist. And I'm thinking, yeah. how is it that I'm possible that I'm both? You know, yeah, you're nothing but a suck up for the Tories. You're nothing but a suck up for the Liberals. Okay, so I didn't want to do that anymore, and I hear that too much of that. And honestly, and so much of that creeps up from the that's that creep, that U.S. creep politics. Oh God, it's just yes. An, ugh, yeah. gives me the willies, which is why I'm so yeah. happy to see what's happening at Fox. Oh God, yeah. yeah. I, but the thing is, the people who are being duped by Fox. They'll still watch them. They know flat out they're being lied to, that they've been conned and they're the mark. And they're still coming back for more because the rage farming is there. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's that echo chamber you talk about, Ted. Lisa's done talk. I've never done talk, thank God, because I think I'm too thin skinned. But how I have to ask you this. How do you deal with that coming up on the screen where you're being called names, where you're being accused of something that you aren't doing or certainly aren't doing on purpose. You know your heart. You know you know who you are. Mm. How does it feel to be constantly attacked like that? And and how are you protected from that? It's you know what sometimes you know they'll tell you shut shut the screen off don't don't read the comments coming in from the listeners because because it can be Ooh. really upsetting, and honestly yeah. it used to bug me sometimes and sometimes it would really bug me and I would try to sweep it out of my mind and it's not that easy at, at times, but I'm thinking for a woman it's got to be worse because the attacks that I've seen some of the things that women that men have written and not even yeah. necessarily men but probably men about women and it's boy it's way below the belt it's like. Twice as It's one of the reasons I walked away from my career, Ted. Yeah, it's, I could see that. And because I used to get all the texts, too. And this was before the pandemic, before any of the conspiracy theories about why we're getting injections and the oh, like. Um, so I didn't have to endure any of that stuff. And I still, it was like enough already. I got no protection, no help for anybody. I've I had a death threat that no one took seriously. I found out that the camera at the back of the radio station wasn't hooked up to anything. (laughs) So I would get there first thing in the morning, and I remember saying to the engineer, well, at least there's a camera here. If somebody beats me, uh, I'm going to, you know, kind of dark humor sort of way. And he said, well, that's not hooked up to anything. It was that kind of stuff. And it's just like, you know what? Nobody cares. They don't care. Why should I? So, Yeah. yeah. I worried, and I've often thought about this. Uh, Our daughter was hosting the midday news talk show at uh, CFRA in Ottawa and on maternity Mm -hmm. leave when she passed away in 2015. And I've often thought, how would Lauren have taken this? How would she have dealt with the, the attacks and the barbs and... Because, you know, it's not like she was raised with sunshine up her skirt, the, her, her whole, you know, existence. And she she only lived to 24. But who was protecting, who is protecting these young people who, you know, are coming? This is the sunshine of your life. This is the best time of your life. And you've got these cranky old effers and younger ones, too, and just complete utter nut bars who are telling you, well, why are you pushing the jab? Why are you this? Why are you, as you said, you know, a shill for the 
for the for the conservatives or for the liberals or for the NDP or whatever. You've got these people unfettered and unfiltered coming at you. How do you maintain your mental health? How do you, you possibly? Know, though, one thing, though, the younger ones are smarter about not enduring it. They will walk away. They will quit their job. They will find something else to do. Not all of them, but there are a couple that I know uh, from the voiceover world and they are like, I'm not putting up with any of this stuff. And it's just like, you don't talk to me that way. And I, I applaud that. I wish I'd had some of that or somebody modeling that for me years and years ago, but they are getting smarter. Evolution works. Mm. Ah, but I will say yes and though, Lisa, here, if you and I had stood up for ourselves uh, when we were in our 20s and 30s about what was happening, you know, people throwing coat racks and, and pitching stuff at you and, and the things that you endured and, and things that I, I went through as well, we would have been told, you know what, there are a million other girls you're who right. are there to take your job. And yep, you're so right. off we go to work at Queen's Park or something, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, we might have, no, it wouldn't have worked. Your job was to not upset the apple cart. Ted Wallison returns in a moment. Do you have an upcoming wedding on your calendar? Hey, it's Ted Wallison for Tom's Place. If you're the father of the bride or a special guest who needs an elegant new suit or tuxedo, Tom will help you get ready for the spotlight. And if you're the lucky groom, Tom is a friend of the groom and the best man to help you dress the entire wedding party for your special day. Whether it's formal or informal, destination wedding, traditional or contemporary, tailored suits or classic tuxedos with all the accessories, why rent a tux when it's so affordable to buy a classic that'll take you to events for years to come? Find out more at Tom's Place in Kensington Market. No one can dress you better or save you more than our wedding specialists. And don't forget, enter our wonderful wedding contest at toms-place.com to win a $500 credit for your wedding party outfits. Tom's Place will suit you. Have you been tasked with the role of a state executor or expected maybe in the future you will be? Well, if so, let me make your life a lot simpler by introducing you to my friend Debbie Stanley. Debbie is the founder of ETP Canada. They specialize in estate administration. Their goal simply is to help Canadian executors understand their role and how to deal with a loved one's estate. Let's face it, there's no school for this. But ETP Canada offers services such as executor support, estate accounting, and they have a new online course called Executor Ready. It's an engaging video designed to make estate administration easier and affordable. And those are two comforting thoughts during a stressful time. So call Debbie Stanley at one 866 Three zero nine zero three eight seven. That's one eight six six three zero nine zero three eight seven. Or you can get her at info at etpcanada.ca. That's info at etpcanada.ca. Now back to Ted Wallachin. Aaron Davis, Lisa Brand are my guests. You, you, you mentioned the, the kind of abuse that, that you witnessed, and people, people probably were not cognizant of how bad things could be for a woman until recently when jennifer valentine came came up came up up front with with what she experienced at q107 working specifically with with john derringer um and something that that went on and on and on and on and on through a number of different uh, women that worked with him the kinds of abuses and he was abuse uh, abusive of of men as well allegedly I say all this allegedly because I didn't witness any of this personally, but I know the people that um, that have spoken about it, and I and I believe what they say one hundred percent. And people didn't have any idea that, that that was that was going on, and that's like now that's not mad. That's not mad. That's not this is not the set of madmen, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, not most like people the, wouldn't have known Ted, but among women in radio in Toronto, it was like a, an open secret. We all pretty much knew, yeah. and. One of my former colleagues said we should be culpable for that by not and and I disagree with that. I don't think I think there's still free will, <laughs> but um, it was something we knew, right, Aaron? I mean, oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I was the target of it for no 
Yes. No reason except that I was a competitor. Competitor? I don't know. CHFI and Q, were we competitors? No, it was just because he thought he could be like Howard Stern being going after Kathy Lee Gifford or or yeah. whoever he wanted to just just tear limb from limb. And so he thought that this was the game that the uh, that the boys played. And uh, it was sophomoric. It was mean. Most of the stuff I never heard about. There were a few things that got through to me, and I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. Pure You're jealousy. Just that you were making more money than he was. That's why. Uh, exactly. That's exactly it, Aaron. He was, and that's what Howard Stern even talks about now. The Howard Stern of today says, back then, I was jealous. I thought I should have everything. I thought I should host everything. I didn't understand why anybody else got anything. And that's, I think, the, the John Derringer who behaved that way. I think he was thinking the exact same thing. Why should she get anything? Why should she yeah. get more money than me? And Howard yeah. Stern and I was much... Sorry. I was just going to say Howard Stern is a much better broadcaster today than he was 20 years ago, in my opinion. Yes, mm -hmm. because he's opened up and become vulnerable and become human. And there's some and that, Yeah, absolutely. Vulnerability, man, it takes so much and it, and it just gives back. It really, truly does. Now, conversely, your audience can be your, your best friends without even actually knowing them. When you lost your daughter, for example, the amount of people that, that reached out to you must have been really, really heartwarming. I mean, I can, couldn't understand. It truly understand. was. Yeah. Um, it, it's, I liken it to like a church community or the or a, a a big a large family neither of which i had in real life but because they had been there when i announced my pregnancy from the bay window at young and queen that was fun they didn't have heated windows then and we were the dummies <laughs> uh, but from announcing my pregnancy to hearing her kind of gurgling when uh, when i was at home for 3 months a week after she was born doing my part of the show to, you know, Christmas Eve at Aaron's and her being part of that. A lot of people grew up with Lauren and, and I would talk about parenting and stuff on the air because I had questions. I was a first timer. And uh, yeah, so the the outpouring of kindness and support was just, it was everything. And and my my guru, Valerie Geller, who is a- uh, Yeah, a, she's brilliant. A, a international, yeah, mentor, um, uh, yeah. consultant. I hate to use the C word with her because she's anything but the consultant. She said, you know what, I used to say that radio doesn't love you back, you know, in, in telling people, give it your all, but save some for yourself, because in the end, you've got to protect yourself. She said, I was wrong in this case. You know, I was wrong. Th this radio did love you back. And, and you know what, it saved me. It really did, because I felt like, okay, I've got to get through this, and I've got to, in my own little plucky sort of, let's put on a show in the backyard sort of way, I've got to show people that you can survive this. Mm -hmm. So that became my reason to keep going. And Lisa, doesn't it blow you away sometimes when you're standing at a supermarket and you're talking to the cashier, to the to the cashier, and someone says, "I know you." Mm -hmm. You're Lisa. It's Brown. bizarre. I can recognize that voice from a mile away, and you think, "Oh my god!" And it makes you feel real good, and then you think to yourself, "My god, did I say something stupid?" <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I remember specifically one woman. In a, in a grocery store, since you mentioned it, I was taking cereal off the shelf saying, see, Lisa Brett eats whatever the heck it was. That's good <laughs> enough for you or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> I'm not on the box, lady. I'm just buying it. But uh, yeah, but it, yeah, it was really sweet. And it's it's very nice. I mean, it's what you want. So they want you to build a community and to build a profile. And I never saw the point of pretending like I didn't enjoy it. Um you know, without going over the top, but, uh, but no, it was nice. One time I went into a furniture store and among all these displays, there was a beautiful picture, uh, picture frame with Paul Cook and I from 680 yeah. News at the time ripped from Chatelaine and they had put us in the, in the picture frame of all the furniture <laughs> stores in all the world. Why did I go into that one and see us in there? So uh, silly things like that. You remember? Yeah, it's uh, it. Of all the things you guys do, so many different things. As I mentioned in the intro, which which you didn't hear. I mean, you're broadcasters, authors, voice uh, voice artists, voice teachers, bloggers, vloggers, podcasters. Uh, I think you do house painting too. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> We're lingerie models. And We're lingerie, lingerie models. <laughs> lingerie we models. Are private, private only. Private only. As we well. are introducing the idea of a cummerbund as a bra because uh, <laughs> we let things fall where they may. And yeah. Uh, yeah, this will be our next thing, right, Lisa? Make sure yes, you remember when the cummerbund, 
a cummerbund always has to be folded down. It's not not folded up. People think it's folded yes. up so you can catch crumbs, but it's not. It's oh, folds, there you go. Very good. Okay, we'll remember that with well, the cumber I think boobs. We'll call it the nipple trapper. What do you think? <laughs> the, tra- the cumber bra, cumber boobs, cumber bra. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Now, so Lisa, Lisa you're, you're, a, you're a voice coach, and, I, and I'm reading through all this, and my God, there was a lot of research to be done on the two of you because you've accomplished so much between the two of you. But but I'm reading it as you're a voice coach, and I'm thinking, well, shit, that's going to intimidate the hell out of me because she's going to be sitting there listening oh. to me thinking, this guy can't speak English. No, no, no. You know what? I, I exclusively will coach brand newbies. I am in no position or I don't think I have the chops, the time or the ability to coach anybody who's got some work under their belt. I, I work only with brand newbies who want to get into it and Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of show them the ropes and that kind of thing. So um, no, it's, uh, you know, my philosophy of voiceover is even if I don't like it, the person booked that job. So it's worth my respect. That's how I look at voiceover. So, and I love, and one of the reasons I think we do so much I, for me anyway, I think about Betty White. He used to say, "You can't hit a moving target as long as you're moving." You're right. You know, you're right. Nobody's gonna knock you down. So, and what and what do either of you say when you're approached by young women or young men, for that matter, who say, "I'd like to carve a career, uh, carve myself a career in broadcasting," knowing what run. you know about what's going on now? Yeah, run. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any? Do you, do you have any 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 ability with trades? Yeah, exactly. In fact, Lisa, one of her latest book is about trades. It's called Trade Up. Yeah. And talk about it, Lisa, just for a sec here, because okay. that's, I gotta. Geez. Well, it's just it's about it's a it's actually about you know getting into the trades and and how you're pretty much guaranteed a career and a a good mm-hmm. career these days, um, which is no secret, but. Uh, I even say that I I might become an electrician if I had to do over again. I don't know. Broadcasters, I have distanced myself from advising anybody about broadcasting. I don't go to schools anymore and talk. I don't do any of that stuff because the last time I did it, I I took a cart with me, a cartridge, which um, (laughs) if you can picture an eight track, but it's not quite an eight track. And Mm. they passed it. They passed it around the room like it was a relic I had dug up from a (laughs) dinosaur dig. And I was some sort of a paleontologist for radio. And I thought as they were passing it around the room and looking at it, trying to figure out how it worked. I thought, this is my last time. I'm not doing this again. Because none of my stuff is relevant. Sending out tapes, doing all that stuff. So I just stay away from the radio thing. I'll I'll send them to somebody else. But people don't come to me about that. Do they come to you? Well, sadly, there's a a generation that the word radio doesn't even exist in their vocabulary. They don't listen to the radio. They don't read newspapers. They don't read magazines. It's it's either streaming or it's online or it's it, it's some music that that they put together themselves and their favorite songs, and and it's 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 kind of sad when you think about it. Well, it all evolves. I mean, here was radio that was supposed to die when television came in, yeah. and it was supposed to die well when movies came in, then television and stuff. Radio persevered until the people in radio killed it, are killing it. And if you are the exception to this, and you are taking exception to what I'm saying. Please, please, please prove me wrong. Radio gave us everything, everything from my husband, who I met in radio at the aforementioned news network, CKO, to to the beautiful place that I'm retired in here on, on Vancouver Island. Radio, I love with all my heart, and I would love to be proven wrong here. And I'm so sorry that, you know, this seems to be kind of like, oh, what happened to radio? You know, like listening to John Wayne talk about hating, you know, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino because they're, they they swear and take their pants off. It's no, we're not doing that. We are we are pleading <laughs> for the Swear and take my pants off. That's my next podcast. I know. <laughs> but but you I'm know, not even just, wearing pants. <laughs> I'm wearing pajama pants. Um, you know what I mean, though? We're not, it's not like, oh, you're all garbage and you're never going to do anything and you've killed our business. No, that's not it. It comes from a place of so much love. Be better. Do better. Please, please save radio. Pay talent. Hire talent. Stay local. Stay connected. You know, it's just, that's what matters to people and you're pushing them away. If if they can't get that connection, they're going to go listen to their Wondery podcast or, you know, get their traffic from Waze or whatever, whatever. 
you have to you have to show them that they need you and you need them. Mm-hmm. Sorry, pontificating. No, 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 that's, no, right. that's all right. I, that's agree. Okay. Ah, I love radio. Th- th- that's okay. L- let's let's talk about the Lisa LaFlamme and what happened with oh, Lisa LaFlamme because I think a that shocked the hell out of people. That here's this young woman who is doing so well in in, in her job and um, people looked up to her, respected her, and enjoyed her, uh, and suddenly she was gone. And people say, well. Is it because her hair turned gray during the pandemic? And I'm thinking, you know what? That can't really be a, an excuse because you can dye it back to whatever color you want. So is that really the problem? Was she making too much money? I don't know how much money she was making. Uh, was she getting too old? Uh, As- she's younger than I am, so I don't consider myself old, but I guess it's all relative. Or is it his combination of the fact that, that nobody is listening to television news and they needed to do something about it and she was the scapegoat? I think that's it. I think that's it. I think she has a um, a view of news that puts a capital N on it and it's got to be important and relevant and all these things, which is what my definition of news used to be. And they wanted to make it more infotainment-ish and I think she was a barrier to that. That's what I have deduced after all this time. Erin? Well, the hair was a lightning rod because of that twerp who made the comment. And <laughs> people say, oh, he was demoted. No, he wasn't. He just gets off at a different floor in the same building. Lisa, you worked for this guy, didn't you, in London? Yeah, I did. I didn't really know him, though, because he, no. he wasn't there a lot. But okay. But, yeah. Yeah, it's so Bell. it's it's Bell. I could go on that's, uh, about how Bell treats people, but anyway. Yep, yeah, I yeah, could too. Yeah, yeah, of course you could. Um, but I I saw it as as yes, it was ageism, and and people who said you know Lloyd Robertson got to stay after he went orange and then gray. Um, he got to stay. He was the voice of of news and reason, and she had a lot more years in her too. She wanted money put toward being in the field and doing these, you know, exceptional pieces. And you're right, Lisa. I think that editorially there were some some big clashes there, but I it became a lightning rod for 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 ages, and because it was time to talk about it. And and the whole idea of, you know, as you said, Ted, uh, at 40, move somebody out. I was fired at almost 40 in 2003. And, and my whole thought process for a long time was, was, cripes, if I'm too old at 40 for CHFI, then whoever is going to hire me again. And I started the pro- thought process of, you know, moving to Canmore, Alberta and opening a yarn barn or something, just completely getting out of the business <laughs> until things came back in, in the most unimaginable way possible. Will there be a second act for Lisa? I don't know. But right now or forevermore, if she, like Jennifer Valentine, get to be the prospective, I, I hesitate to say poster girls because that's, that's you know, kind of demeaning. Uh, but if they become the faces of their causes, it will not have been for naught. The interesting thing is that this generation of people who are being pushed out of their jobs prematurely uh, appeal to the generation that has the money to spend. Exactly. You can't exactly. bring in some 29-year-old guy and think they're a woman and think that they're going to suddenly bring in all their 29-year-old friends because, right. A, they're not interested in that form of communication, and, B, they're probably just starting their families and don't have the kind of money to throw around that the people in their 50s and 60s and 70s do. And so I'm thinking... The bean counters are smarter than I am because they're they're educated in bean counting. But am I missing something in that? It's always been that way. I mean, yeah. when we were all targeting 2554, that precious, or 2534, even more so, it's like, yeah, okay, you guys really, people, really should know more than I do. But, uh, you know, you get to 54, your kids, at least, you know, when I was when I was on the air, your kids have moved out. You've got more money. You're the richer grandparents now. You can take the whole family on cruises. Theoretically, your house is likely paid off. You've got all this disposable income. Why were we throwing them away to get the 25-year-old or the 24 or 28-year-old 
who doesn't have disposable income. And if they do, it's going on a matcha latte, you know, just <laughs> it made no sense. And now, sorry, here I am again. I'm sounding like the old person, but it's uh, Lisa. Yeah, it has, it has always been that way, as you yep. said, because the 29 year old is now the manager. And I know I was at a classic rock station. My program director, I respect the heck out of, he, he knew exactly what he was doing, but there were some other people who were younger and just wanted to change everything to their liking. Mm. And it didn't matter. The rest of the stuff didn't matter. It didn't, the research didn't matter. Nothing mattered. I don't like it. It can't be good was the attitude. And it's just youth is wasted on the young, right? They, they think they're all that matter. Um, I used to think this way when I was in my 20s. So I used to think, why would anybody think my peers and I are all that? We don't have anything. We don't know anything. We haven't been anywhere yet, you know? Yeah. Um, it never made sense to me. I always respected the older ones, but apparently I'm a freak. So Yeah, and, and losing Lisa <laughs> Laflamme, to get back to what you brought up, Ted, uh, as we meander here um, a little bit, she, they, they, purposely threw away a huge section of their audience, the ones who already feel marginalized, you know, that that we're not being listened to, nobody's giving us the the shows we want, blah, 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 blah. And, and that's not true. I mean, we can watch Dateline and Law and & Order all we want. but And Matlock. No, but you know what I mean? They're, Matlock. They're, yeah, right? There's one for you. Um, but but to be able to, to, to just say, you know what? You don't matter anymore. Sorry. Here's the next guy. And you know what? Omar may be the nicest, best journalist, but he will never be given a fair chance because no. of the, the horrible. And that's unfortunate. You yeah. know, he's he just seems like a really decent guy. Everybody talks about him very well. Mm -hmm. He's great on camera. But it what a way to bring him in. And again, I take that back to the arrogance of Bell. They thought, I believe, that um, people would just get over it. It's like, ah, you know, they build this person up, Lisa, they give her all these resources. They do all this marketing around her to make her what she is and to bring her to all these people. But then when they decide it's over for her, they just think everybody's going to forget like that. That's the arrogance of this company. They still think they're a monopoly and that they know everything. Hmm. Did I tell you, Ted, <laughs> that I had to buy my own staples while working for Bell? <laughs> she's over it though no she's i tell it every time i can my own staples that's my other podcast i, I have a, i have a i have a special closet in my house where i keep things that i stole from bell by the way oh <laughs> damn it i never thought of that although uh, i don't know what i'm going to do with a a cfrb mic flash at this point in my life <laughs> but hey, okay, I'll, it was just a feeling that, it. it was yeah. just a good feeling knowing that i got away with it you know what i'm saying <laughs> I got it. Yeah, and you don't know where he had to hide it to get it out of the building. That's, that's the part right. we can't talk about. That's well. That's that's yeah. that's perhaps another story and, and another kind of a podcast. And yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. We'll call it up yours. <laughs> yeah, up yours. That's right. <laughs> uh, we're talking to uh, Aaron Davis and, and Lisa Brandt. The amount of things that that, that go on a, around us nowadays, it's there's always something to talk about. And everybody has an opinion, and that's the old saying: opinions are like like assholes, right? Everybody's got one, right? I don't mm -hmm. mean to be rude, uh, which is ironic because people say, "Well, you know, once you get your own podcast, Ted, you'll be able to swear." And, that's right. You know, and, and I swear he keeps his mic flashes. And I, and that's <laughs> right. That's right. And uh, and I've forgotten what I was saying here. I'm losing my mind because I'm old. But but the great thing is that you that you, that you can talk about anything you want and and. You can take you, you can look at it from so many different angles, and yet you've got management who don't seem to have a three hundred and sixty degree lens. They don't really see it all the way around. They see what they want to see. They see like this target demographic. They see well, this is hot. Well, I hear this is hot. This is trending. Let's just go to that without paying attention to what everything else is going on around them. You know, it's it's like, they're scared. It's, it's like I think they're scared. Nobody knows what they're doing. And if everybody would just admit that we'd all be better off. Nobody knows what they're doing. And I think they're just scared for their jobs. A lot of people fail up. Right. Oh, God. They, yeah. yeah. And especially in radio, if you hang around long enough, you're going to get something's going to happen. <laughs> um, um, and I mean, 
Ted, I'm sure you have more stories than I've forgot, you know, than I'll ever have about this kind of thing. But um, I, I just think they just don't know what they're doing and they're just trying to survive and they're scared. That's what I saw in my career. Yeah. It's unfortunate because they're, you know, it, it can be a great career and, and clearly it'll never die. It's just like newspapers physically, there are very few boxes on, on the streets today, but somebody still needs to write the content that's going to go into a, into a blog or comes from a blog or, or goes, you know, goes onto a, uh, on somebody's Twitter account or goes into the, you know, in, onto Meta AI. or whatever. Well, no, Wanna it's chat AI? GPT, chat GPT. Yeah. I hosted an event last week, uh, Ted, where they, the outline for the day was created by chat GPT. Yeah. And that was a first. And you know what? There were a couple things could have been done better. I should have come back at the very end to thank the audience and tell them, have a great trip home or whatever after the CEO spoke. And I thought, that's the human touch that was missing there. And I should have caught that and said, here's what we're going to do. So, mm -hmm. yeah, chat GPT is going to, all you do is just feed it your thoughts or your, your these are the opinions. These are the well, people that we want to enrage or we want to please or pander to. And there's the, there's the article. Just wait. So there's, you can... a, there's a hundred other, other AIs like chat GPT as well out there. Yeah. And, and like one, one um, company has hired me to blog for them at $20 a blog. Because all I have to do is babysit it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it only so I can see how it works, so I know the enemy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But 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 can, can you create personality? Can can you create um, uh, a vibe? Can you can you really create no. that kind of empathy? Technically, this is why care. people like us. Yes, exactly. As Lisa says, they don't care. This is why the yeah. ones who still make the human connection like radio always did, and I keep coming back to radio, my first and always love, um, the people who make the connection and let other people feel seen and heard, they are the ones who will rise above. If yeah. AI can do that, then fine. But you know what? There was a there was a piece on John Oliver last week tonight, uh, about a month ago, where they started up a Twitter account from from Zip, and she was going, "Good morning, world. This is my first tweet." And then within an hour, from just taking in all of the all of the stuff that surrounded that Twitter account, she was talking about Nazis and Hitler and all of the most horrific things that come out of of people's fingers onto a keyboard or the trolls. And this is what that Twitter account became because that was what it was being surrounded by. So, yeah. But are, but are you going to get a a, 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 a a created announcer, host, an AI creation that's going to have empathy, that's going to be, uh, that, that will be able to exhibit self-deprecating humor? They say it will get there. Uh, now some of them are writing their own code instead of having to input code, which is really freaky. Uh, but they they say uh, it will get there. It's not there right now. When I look at the blogs that I've generated with this one AI program called Dragon or something, uh, just to, again, just to get to know what's out there, um, it looks like about a grade 10 C plus essay. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, well, clearly no they're all... Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what I'm wondering. And, and well, I mean, you're gonna send you're gonna send um, a machine out for a remote. Exactly. I don't know. Oh, they wish, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. You know. Wow. So I, yeah. I think. So I think in, in I guess my, my and I'm going around in circles here. The point I was trying to make is it, it, when I get approached by young people saying, "Well, what do you think about the future of broadcasting?" I said, "Well, there always will be a future in broadcasting, and whether it's through podcasts and blogs and vlogs and and radio would in whatever form it exists and television whatever form it exists which is going all streaming i think the networks are all going to be gone at one point mind you they own all the streaming services anyway uh, but it'll all it'll all look different but there's still going to be need for content and there's going to be need for personalities unless the only way do you know what the savior with ai is going to be what's that is the, the ai will replace the bean counters <laughs> we can hope. Yes. <laughs> yes eh? Sorry, Hal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Right. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, listen, this has been a lot of fun chatting. I, I really appreciate it. I can't believe we've just uh, blown through an hour. Just Jeez. Shooting, shooting, chewing the fat, as it were. 
But it's, yeah. it's 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 great seeing both of you. I, I enjoy listening to your podcast. Thank um, you, thank you, and and we're excited to to be talking with you too. It did sound like a bit of a a, a, a bitch fest, and it's really not. It's it's hope for the future. It's lamenting. Uh, yeah. the current path that radio and to a great degree television are on but it comes from such a place of love and we don't want to turn things back we just want to turn things over to people who know what they're doing and care about it as much as we do and did I feel like radio was a boyfriend that broke my heart you know yeah like, I, I guess feel I, like yeah I loved it for so long maybe not a boyfriend maybe a partner and um, I loved it for so long and then it slowly just stopped loving me back and... but you talk to people who you know who who had the same kind of passion but on the other side of the radio and I sense their disappointment as well because when I talk to my friends they say what the hell happened to your radio station you yes. used to be the the news leader in Canada at CFRB now they don't even have a bloody newsroom they don't yeah. have a newsroom. And simulcasting television news is garbage. That is a visual medium, and radio was meant well, to, to paint and, pictures. But well, it saves tell, money. Tell me, uh, tell me how how a team like the like the Toronto Blue Jays can justify not sending their radio crew on the road to to cover a baseball game. Like yeah. like Rogers can't afford that, and even Buck Martinez, the great Buck Martinez, the Hall of Famer, said, you know, he says you you get so much going out there standing there by the by the you know by the dugout or standing by the batting cage and talking to the players getting to know what's going on what's new in the team and you get information that you don't get sitting there reading or now, watching it, on it's television the difference between watching a video on the grand canyon or seeing it for yourself right? well exactly exactly yeah well, if they still think that the at-home team is going to still sell Johnsonville brats or whatever they are, um, they're, they don't care. They don't yeah. care. Yeah, Ted would not have allowed this. The advertisers have to follow. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. Oh, no, we're bitching again. <laughs> Stop it. No. Well, I don't think I don't, I don't consider it bitching. I think it's just a, it's it's reflections. But it's a good point. It's, it's, good it, point. It, it's reflections in the past and 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 comments on 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 the current situation from three people who've spent a fair amount of years in the industry. Yeah, we did. It's very good to see you again. Thank you. Nice thank to see you, you guys. I she even was talking today. to me. Oh, I shaved for you guys today, by the way. Did you Whoa, shave, Aaron? thank Aaron, you. Did you? Did you shave? No, no, not yet. Not yet, no. but I've got my nice pajamas on. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you can pick up uh, or you pick up on, uh, gracefully and frankly, uh, a weekly. Is it weekly or bi-weekly? How are you doing? Weekly. Weekly. It is weekly. Every Thursday. Yeah. Every Thursday. Everybody drops on Thursday. So do we. Actually, this huh. week we're doing Friday because you guys weren't available until Thursday. Oh, wow. But that's okay. It's no big deal. Uh, it's available through very virtually every podcast platform that there is which is a great thing as opposed to being stuck to one point place on a dial that's mm -hmm. another great thing about it isn't it oh, yes yeah. amen and uh the, the same thing goes with your podcast drift yes and lisa your book uh, on trades is is out now yeah, it's on Amazon now. It's called Trade Up, um, co-written with a man named John Finan, who is in the trades and um, and is going to be the spokesmodel for this book. So, uh, yeah, Great. he has a real stake in, in increasing, you know, trades people for his own business. And so we are kind of partnered in this together. I wish I had taken up trades. Nah, then we wouldn't be having this chat. No, no in, in in addition to this, like I I could have I could have done without physics and chemistry, and mm -hmm. and maybe taking a shop class. I would have been further ahead, or or cooking I class for shop. that matter. Yeah, you I took, took shop, shop class. Lisa? I was I think I might have been the first in my high school first girl to take shop. Uh, I still have the bowl that I made in shop class. Mm -hmm. And anytime it gets moved in the house, it is the law that angels must sing because it is the sacred bowl that I made from cherry wood in shop class. So yeah. Wow. I'll have to show you the bowl sometime. It's a bowl pretty, which will one special. day be in the broadcast hall of fame. Oh, well, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I won't, but my bowl will. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, better than nothing. Thanks very much to both of you. And uh, thanks very much to all of you for tuning in. We hope that you will join us again next week and don't forget if you get a chance to check out your uh, internet and check out the organ and tissue donation situation and uh, see if you can help out because you can change or even save a life 
Meanwhile, have a great week. The Ted Wallachian Podcast has been brought to you by Tom's Place. For the finest in men's clothing at unbeatable prices, it's Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin in the heart of Kensington Market. Tom's Place will suit you. And ETP Canada, providing a state administration with ease. The Ted Wallachian Podcast is produced by me, Becky Coles. Technical production by Paul Gatt. Music by Bike Thieves. For more information on this podcast and our sponsors, and to talk to Ted, go to www.tedwallachan.ca.